retrolaminar block. So this is another video as part of my course to cover the truncal region analgesia. As you see, for all these blocks, I have a separate video you can watch, and I have a longer video that give you the fundamentals of truncal regional analgesia. So let's get started. Retrolaminar approach versus traditional approach. So this thought to be, as the name suggests, this is a lamina. So this is behind the lamina. This is they call it retrolaminar. While here, this is the paravertebral space. So this um, probably the the first paper came in suggesting the retrolaminar approach as an alternative to the traditional paravertebral space. Back to the basics. This is the anatomy of the spinal nerve uh, in the thoracic region between T2 to T11 or 12, and the spinal nerve formed by the union of the ventral and dorsal root. The spinal nerve branches here and give you ventral and dorsal rami. The ventral rami continue as an intercostal nerve, and the dorsal rami give you the medial and lateral branches. So the thought is retrolaminar block is really a modified paravertebral block, potentially easier and with less side effect. And injection in the plane between the bony vertebral lamina and the overlying muscle. As simple as that. Um, how we do it? Uh, the vertebral lamina are identified by ultrasound imaging in a paramedian sagittal plane by sequentially visualizing from lateral to medial the ribs coming closer to midline, transverse process, and finally the lamina. Once you see the lamina, um, you uh, insert your needle under ultrasound guidance to touch the lamina and then you put your local anesthetic above that and of course we have to choose the level that correspond to the dermatome you are interested on. Um, this is um, again from the first paper that uh, described this technique. So um, starting from the right side um, which is lateral you will see the ribs. So then you go more uh, medial, then you start to see the transverse process here. Keep going medial and to see the lamina as a straight uh, line. So you then inject the local anesthetic and you watch the muscles raising up from the lamina. And um, what also you can do is basically you put a catheter there and you thread it over the lamina, which is also reported. Um, here is another picture for you. Now, uh, I want you to pause this video and think about these numbers. One, two, three, four, and I, I put some ultrasound pictures for you here. And I want you to think what block can be done at number four, three, two, and one. Ready? So number four, here is your ultrasound probe. Here is your ultrasound probe. So this is your ultrasound image. This is a rhomboid intercostal plane block, and this is your local anesthetic. Then you went more medial in number three, as you see here, right? And this is your ultrasound image. Now you are seeing grips. So what you can do here is intercostal nerve block. You keep going more medial. Now you are very, really medial. Look at this picture. 
two and two. So you are above the TP. So you can add this level either do a rector spinae muscle here, plane block, or go all the way down here and do paravertebral block. You keep going medial, now you see flat line. Now you see flat line. This is the lamina. Here you do the retrolaminar block. Here is more pictures for you. So again, same concept here. A, um, this is how you place your ultrasound. You can use curvilinear, linear or linear, depend on the depth. On uh, higher thoracic, I would prefer to use the linear for sure. And then again from A, uh, lateral, um, that correspond to where do you find the ribs. So A, A, and then B, you see the transverse process, and C, you see the lamina. And then you bring your needle again, touch the lamina, and put the numbing medication here, the local anesthetic here. Um, you may also do it actually in transverse approach. So in the transverse approach, um, uh, here is your um, spinous process. Here is your TP. If you imagine, this is the lamina, right? And you can come in plane and touch the lamina and do the block. Also, it is easy. So what blocks, what nerves you are blocking here? Again, uh, the idea that you are blocking the dorsal and ventral uh, rami of the spinal nerves. Uh, it's very similar to the paravertebral block. However, if you notice here, it's unlikely that you block the uh, sympathetic ganglion. So you most likely you will not get a sympathetic block with this, but you will get a good somatic uh, innervation block. Uh, indication, mastectomy, thoracotomy, laparotomy, multiple rib fracture. Contraindication, again, general contraindication, patient refusal, allergy to local anesthetic, infection at the site, bleeding disorder. Complication, um, there is no reported pneumothorax or hemothorax with this, which makes sense. Um, other potential complication will be last infection and bleeding. Now, is there evidence supporting this? Um, actually, this is a hot topic nowadays. There are a number of clinical trials just came in 2021. So this is one of them showed that uh, it failed to show non-inferiority of the retrolaminar block compared to paravertebral block. Though retrolaminar block has the advantage of a shorter time to perform, retrolaminar block is not recommended for a patient undergoing VATS or limited thoracotomy because of lack of efficacy as compared to paravertebral block. So this was a comparison for uh, minimal invasive lung surgery. Here is another study also published in 2021. And in this study, they compared the rectus spinae to the retrolaminar block for breast surgery. And what they found that it is equivalent to a rectus spinae play block uh, and not superior. Uh, so a rectus spinae is not, is equivalent to retrolaminar block for post-operative analgesia after breast surgery when using 20 ml of 0.375 uh, levobuvacaine um, at the fourth thoracic vertebra. Here is another study also published in 2021. This time um, compared the, uh, uh, but this is a retrospective uh, matched non-inferiority study. The, the first two, they were randomized clinical trials. So in this study, they compared the retrolaminar versus the epidural block for post-operative analgesia after a minor video 
assisted thoracic surgery, and they found that the energetic effect of continuous ultrasound guided retrolaminar block were none inferior to those of the thoracic epidural analgesia. So it's a growing field. We are ex expecting to see more and more studies coming. However, it's something um, good to know and easy to perform. Thank you for watching.